Hi, I'm Mark Rosengarten. Welcome to... Ask Rosengarten. For today's show, we have two questions coming to us from YouTube viewers. The first one from YouTube viewer Vic Dot. What is the best way of visualizing molecules to determine polarity? For the first question, I have a series of simple molecules drawn up here. And as you can notice, some of them are symmetrical and others less so. To determine whether a molecule is polar or not, what you need to do is take a look at the number of lines of symmetry that the molecule has. For example, in the molecule H2, there are two ways you can slice this molecule in half so that each side is a mirror image of the other. For example, if we slice it this way, we have half a hydrogen, half a hydrogen, another half a hydrogen, another half a hydrogen. If we slice it this way, we have a full hydrogen reflecting a full hydrogen. This molecule has two lines of symmetry. Therefore, it will have symmetrical electron distribution. In other words, the pull and electrons on both sides of this molecule will be identical. Hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1. Therefore, so does the other one. So the pull and electrons in this molecule is going to be identical. The pull on one side cancels out the pull on the other side, making this whole molecule nonpolar. In the case of hydrogen chloride, the hydrogen and the chlorine don't reflect each other along a vertical axis. But along a horizontal axis, we reflect half a hydrogen on either side and half a chlorine on either side. Chlorine has an electronegativity of 3.2 and hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.2. So in the molecule, the electrons will be pulled toward the side of the chlorine, creating what's called a dipole moment a partially negative charge on the chlorine side of the molecule and a partially positive charge on the hydrogen end of the molecule. This is why hydrogen chloride molecules can attract each other. The partially negative end of one molecule will attract the partially positive end of another molecule. In the case of water, again, if you cut it diagonally, you reflect one hydrogen on either side and half an oxygen on either side. But you can't cut this any other way and get lines of symmetry. You can't cut it like this. You can't cut it like that. One line of symmetry is all you get. Now this hydrogen is only pulling with 2.1. And this hydrogen is only pulling with 2.1. I made a mistake earlier. That should have been 2.1. And the oxygen is 3.5. So the hydrogen and oxygen, this bond here is polar. And this bond here is polar. And so the general trend of direction of electrons in this molecule is towards oxygen, making the oxygen partially negative and the other side partially positive, partially positive dipoles. For a methane molecule, you can slice it horizontally, reflecting an H on both sides, half an H, half an H, half an H, half an H. You can also cut it vertically. Full H on both sides, half an H, half an H, half an H, half an H. And in both ways, you get half a carbon. You can also cut it in half this way so it reflects, and you can cut it this way so that it reflects. Carbon has an electronegativity of 2.6. The hydrogens are 2.1. The electronegativity difference in each bond is 0.5. That means that's a polar bond, that's a polar bond, and that's a polar bond, and that's a polar bond. And all these polar bonds are being pulled in towards carbon because carbon's got the higher attraction for electrons. This polar bond is canceled out by that polar bond, and this polar bond is canceled out by that polar bond, making this entire molecule nonpolar. There's a symmetrical distribution of electrons in this molecule, so there is no dipole as you had in these molecules. For carbon dioxide, you can slice this way. You'll reflect an oxygen on either side and half a carbon atom on either side. You can slice it this way. You have half an oxygen, half an oxygen, half an oxygen, half an oxygen, half a carbon, half a carbon. Note that it's not the letter C we're cutting in half, okay? It's the atom that that C represents. Carbon has an electronegativity of 2.6. 
each of the oxygens has an electronegativity of 3.5, making this bond between the oxygen and carbon a polar bond. And this bond is also a polar bond, but they're exactly the same strength polar in exactly the opposite direction. So the polarity of these bonds cancel each other out, we have a symmetrical electron distribution, and the whole molecule is nonpolar. In this molecule, it's a little different than with methane. In methane, we had hydrogens on all sides. In this molecule, we only have hydrogens on three sides and a chlorine on the bottom. So the only way to slice it is straight from top to bottom. Full hydrogen, full hydrogen, half a hydrogen, half a hydrogen, half a chlorine, half a chlorine. Hydrogen has an electronegativity of 2.1, chlorine is 3.2, and carbon is 2.6. Now, all of the bonds are polar bonds because the electronegativity difference between hydrogen and carbon is 0.5. That's higher than the 0.4 threshold for nonpolar. So all of these bonds between hydrogen and carbon, the electrons are being pulled in the direction of carbon. Now, they were doing the same thing over here also, and this fourth bond was also being pulled towards carbon, but not here. In this bond, the electronegativity difference between carbon and chlorine is 0.6. That's greater than the 0.5 difference we had here. So the electrons in this bond are being pulled towards chlorine, making this side of the molecule partially negative and the other end partially positive. This molecule is polar. So the best way to visualize molecules to determine polarity, if the molecule has only one line of symmetry, then the molecule is a polar molecule because the electrons are going to be pulled more towards one side of the molecule than the other. If the molecule has two or more lines of symmetry, then the molecule has symmetrical distribution of electrons throughout the molecule and there are no poles to the molecule. Polar, it's got poles. Nonpolar, well, pretty self-evident, no poles. Our second question comes to us courtesy of Mario McLean. How about how what functional groups and or do and how to identify them? I'm a little cloudy with those. Is that with a chance of meatballs? Oh, I'm so sorry. A functional group is an atom or group of atoms that when you add it to a hydrocarbon chain turns that molecule into uh, a, a molecule that belongs to a certain class of organic compounds. Functional groups include the hydroxyl group which belongs to alcohols, the carboxyl group. This belongs to two classes. Now if this is on the end or in the primary position, you have yourself an organic acid. If it's in the middle, then you have an ester. And you also have the carbonyl group. It's a double bonded oxygen. Notice the difference. The carboxyl group has two oxygens. The carbonyl group has only one. If it's on the end, or primary, then you're talking about an aldehyde. If it's in the middle, or secondary, then it's a ketone. Let's take a look at some examples of these molecules. Here we have two molecules that are isomers of each other. Notice that they all have three carbons, two oxygens, and six hydrogens. Both molecules have the same number of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, which makes these molecules isotopes of each other. What's the difference between them? Well, in this molecule, the functional group is on the end carbon. And in this, the functional group is in the middle of the molecule. And that's the difference between organic acids and esters. These two molecules are also isomers of each other. They each have three carbons, they each have six hydrogens, and they each have one double bonded oxygen. What's different about them? In this one, the double bonded oxygen is bonded to an end carbon. And in this molecule, the double bonded oxygen is on a middle carbon. On the end, it's an aldehyde. In the middle, it's a ketone. This molecule is called prop, because there's three carbons, and, because there's single bonds, 
propanoic acid. Propanoic acid. Propanoic acid. This molecule is called methyl, because there's a single carbon on this side, FNO8. One carbon dingly dangly, methyl. Two carbons, F, single bond, and with double bonded oxygens, O8, FNO8, methyl FNO8. The side with the oxygen gets the O8 to the name, methyl FNO8. Are you getting sick of that yet? For the aldehydes, three carbons, prop, single bonds, and double bonded oxygen on the end, al, prop and al, propanal. For this one, we have three carbons, one, two, three, prop, and, because they're single bonds, own, because it's a ketone, prop and own, propanone, also known as acetone. Okay, so what's this molecule? Well, it has an OH on it, and there's nothing else here. If there was double bonded O, well, then it would be an organic acid, but there's just an OH. What is it? Good memory! It's an alcohol. What's the name of this alcohol? Prop an all. Propanol. But the OH can go in more than one place. The OH could also be bonded to the second carbon. This is called 1-propanol, also called N or normal propanol. If the OH was bonded up here, it would be called 2-propanol. Now what if the oxygen wasn't on the end? What if it was in between a couple of carbons? These are isomers of each other. They both have three carbons, they both have eight hydrogens, and they both have one oxygen. What's different about them? Here, the oxygen is kind of on the outside of the molecule. Here, the oxygen's on the inside of the molecule. Here, the oxygen is bonded to just one other carbon. This oxygen is bonded to two other carbons. This is called an ether. Because there's an oxygen with stuff on ether side of it. What's the name of this ether? Well, we got one carbon on this side, methyl. We've got two carbons on the other side, ethyl. And, of course, it's an ether, so it's methyl ethyl ether. And finally, we have two functional groups that contain nitrogen in them. This is the amine group. If we threw hydrogens on either side, it would be ammonia. This is called the amide group. The name of this amine would be F, because there's two carbons, you don't count the nitrogens. F, an, for the single bond, amine. F and amine, F and amine. This one is called F because two carbons, and because the single bond, amide. F and amide, F and amide. Notice how the differences between the functional groups is very slight. The difference in position and the addition of an extra oxygen turns the molecule into a completely different kind of organic molecule. So when you're identifying organic compounds, you have to match exactly. So that's what functional groups are, and that's how to identify them when you see them in a compound. If you have a question, please email me at askrosengarten at gmail.com. So what are you waiting for? Ask Rosengarten.